Hey, what do we got here? A whole lot of silver. The old man is crazy about silver. He's gonna be like a kid on Christmas morning when he sees this. A secret service ID for J. Hard McGrath. Some letters signed to him by Hubert Humphrey, J. Edgar Hoover, White House Pass, and half of a $10 bill. Only 12 known to exist. This should be number 13. I have a book expert who can look at it. What do we have here? First edition, For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway, and a framed autograph of Ernest Hemingway. Recent auction results, we've seen this print achieve 16,000 pounds. Nice to meet you. All right. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. The heated negotiations begin, but eventually, Rick can get the art for himself. 500,000 pounds. We are a bit far. Tell you what, I'll give you 600,000 pounds. I've been collecting bikes 20 years, and I want to collect something that nobody has. Murray has been producing bikes since the 1930s. They were pretty expensive, became known by their competitors as the ones to follow. How much you're looking to get? In 6,000 for and 2,000 for. Be with. I want to sell my old Taylor Prohibition bottle of whiskey. Pops, I have the medicine you need. Yeah, right. Where'd you get that from? Well, it was about 30 years ago. A guy owed me some money, and evidently he had two of them, and he found them in his grandmother's attic. He drank one and paid me with this one. Rick explains to the man what he knows about the history of the whiskey. The Prohibition Act outlawed alcohol, except for when you needed it for medicinal purposes or religious purposes. If you wanted whiskey, you either bought bootleg whiskey, a fixed RX label through opening. So I guess this is where the like prescription label would go. Rick is sure excited to talk about this drink, and the customer also seems to enjoy listening to him. Do you know when the mixed drink became popular? No. It was during Prohibition because the whiskey was just rock gut, the gin was bathtub gin. It just tasted so bad. They had to mix it with something fruity just to get it down. I'll give you 200 bucks for it, and that's what I could do. Well, I, I never really knew what I was gonna get for it, and uh, that was more than what he owed me by far. So okay. we got a deal. Thanks. Wendell Br I'm not afraid to take a risk for $200 because it's going to look great in my shot. This man is here to sell his shotgun to Corey. I got an old Steven shotgun, three triggers. Chum asks what he doesn't for a living, and he answers him. What do you do for a living? I'm an insurance adjuster. Chum asks how much this shotgun is. How old is this shotgun? About 150 years old. It's in really good shape. Corey also explained how they made these types of guns in the 90s. You can see kind of like the wavy lines in the barrel. Pretty much what they would do is they would take wire, wrap it around a solid piece of steel, heat it up and hammer it till it became one solid piece of steel. Real expensive process, at the time, the best steel in the world. He then calls someone to help take a look at this gun to verify its authenticity. Do you mind if I called a buddy of mine down? This is one of the rarest shotguns that I've ever seen. And most of them, they're unengraved. It's all on the frame and also on the trigger guard. Very nice scroll engraving. I mean, I kind of figure that to engrave it and make it look that good, I'm assuming you had to be kind of a wealthy guy to own it back then. This shotgun was used for hunting primarily. It does capture your attention with the three triggers. This gun's seen a lot of wear, a lot of use. I just don't know what it's worth. That's to be expected. This gun would be worth about seven to a thousand dollars. How much? Seven hundred to a thousand dollars. Jimison, thanks for coming in. I don't think he will. Rick, Chumley, and Alex arrive at the gun range to test out a seven-barrel gun. That is a big <laughs> gun. Where in the hell did you get this? I go to the range all the time. Where's this guy? I guess he really likes me. He gave it to me. It's actually a volley gun. I've actually never seen one in person. Only in some glass in a museum. I was nervous to shoot it. The chief complaint about them. They were designed British warships in the beginning of the Napoleonic, but the problem was guys were actually dislocating their shoulder. It's all right with you if we shoot them? You need to be very careful with things like this. Alex shoots the gun but misses the target. Then Chum tries it and destroys it. Why don't you let me shoot it? People will miss me less. And oh! <laughs> well, I think I hit the barrel. Good luck, Chum. Hope you like your fingers. Yeah! work job. That's what I'm talking about. The owner demands 38 grand for the gun, but after a heated negotiation, the deal concluded with a whopping 30 grand. What do these things go for? 35 to 40 thousand dollars. Okay. I would take 38 for it. Take less than that. It was a gift. I'll give you 28 for it. I have to make money. How about 30? You know what? I'll give you the 30 grand for it. Oh. Thank you so much. I think I made a great deal. I'm a little bit giddy over this gun. I think I'll get close to 40 thousand for it. What do you think, chum? I think you're a little chicken. You should have shot it. I'm not chicken. You're definitely yellow belly. So I'm here in New York to take a look at one of the most historical documents, an original Declaration of Independence broadside, and I'm about to take a look at one right now.
Rick's in New York, hoping to get his hands on one of the rare copies of the Declaration of Independence. Definitely a wow moment. A wow um, moment, right. Extremely rare. July 1776, Declaration of Independence. Absolutely amazing. I think it was John Dunlop was a printer in Philadelphia. He basically takes a, a copy from Congress, writes it all out, then goes back to the print shop lays out his print and starts printing these. Uh, they think he printed right around 200 of them. And when other printers around the country got a hold of them, they also made copies, and this is the New Hampshire one. I imagine your local tavern, when this was first penned up, there was a lot of people standing around going, damn. You can actually see the pinholes indicates that it was displayed publicly. Jeremy offers Rick a massive amount for these documents, but Rick needs an expert to price them. So how much are you looking for this? In exceptional condition, two million. Okay. I just want a document expert to look at it, okay? Fair. Because a little bit of knowledge can always get you in trouble, and that's what I got. Yeah, I am thrilled to see this. I'm Seth Caller, and an expert in important historic documents. Seth tells Rick that these documents are rare and can be worth $2 million. Normally, we'd have to take this out of the frame to authenticate it. I've actually seen this exact copy before. This to all of the known copies of the same broadside. Nail holes from uh, back then, which are not all handmade and different. All right, so, so I mean, it's 100% legit. Absolutely. All right. As tax, what is it worth? Beautiful copy. I think this could go for $2 million at auction now. Negotiations begin. Will Rick be able to buy these ancient documents? I would love to give you like $1.4 million. I would sell it to you for $1.5 million. Okay. Uh, 1.45, I, I think that's fair. I, I think we can both be happy with that. I think we got a deal. Oh my goodness, I own the Declaration. <laughs> got a call from my gallery and they have two Louis Icard etchings. So I've called up Chad. Hey, how's it going? So where'd you get these? I got them at a sheriff's auction in Gove County, Kansas. Really incredible guy. He was literally the king of Art Deco, was painting in the 19 teens. Chad talks about Lewis's wife. That's his wife, right? It's Fanny Volmer, 18 years old, working in a fashion house as a model. She turned into the muse. Anytime you see a blonde haired, curly girl, you know it's Fanny. They weren't together very long before he got drafted in the military. Every time he had any downtime, sketch whatever surface he could. Whatever. Well, Fanny had found a publisher who would publish some. He got out of the military. He had a built-in fan base. Chad proceeds to take a closer look at the drawings and notices some red flags here and there. Okay, if these are real etchings, they'll be worth a lot of money. An etching is a copper plate that has okay. uh, an engraving into it. The few problems, that's a photo printed of the piece, not hand signed. They're not etchings. How much did you want for these? 1700 for the pair. Between the two of them is $50. Thanks for bringing them in, though. Thank you, Rick. No problem. Hey, how can I help you? I got a... This man walks in with a Wells Fargo artifact. To the pawn shop today to sell my strong box, ball and chain. I'm looking to get around $2,000. The man brings out the items in the box to show Rick. As they checked, he explains the origin of the artifact. This ball and chain right here uh, actually comes from the human prison. This one right here, it comes from Folsom Prison from around the late 1800s and 1900s. Rick's father explained how these artifacts came into existence. But Rick has a few concerns. Back in the day, a ball and chain kept prisoners from making a break for it. Here's my concerns. When they forged chains, it was just hot welding together. You know, get it hot, beat it together. It was all done by a blacksmith. That's why I have a problem with these chains. They're electrically welded. See how these have arcs from an arc welder? Never in the history of any prison did they ever have their name put on the balls. Rick calls it fake. Okay, so what are you trying to say? It's fake. The manufacturers who made these things weren't gonna change the die for every prison. But the box might be real. You have a box full of fake stuff, gives me real doubt about the box. This The man shows Rick and Mr. Harrison a rare record of Martin Luther King Jr. before his assassination. I got an original Martin Luther King Jr. album. Okay, where did you get this thing? I had an estate sale in LA. You might be asking how much you paid? Actually, yes, yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I seen a similar albums appraised and sold for five thousand dollars by that about one month before he was assassinated he was a bestseller he was an incredible speaker as far as human rights go his most powerful tool is his voice and man could he speak it's in great shape don't keep a high-end record player so the last thing i want to do damage this record by playing it on something cheap the seller offers three grands for it but rick negotiates and buys it for dollar five hundred how much do you want for it between 25 and three grand no we're really far apart i'm assuming it's a lot rare extremely rare what would you be comfortable given to me like 500 bucks expected a lot more <sighs> 
That's all I can go. You got the deal. All right. Okay. I'll take it. I was looking more two, three grand. There's a hard market. I was good with that. I've been collecting bikes 20 years, and I want to collect something that nobody has. Murray has been producing bikes since the 1930s. They are pretty expensive. Came known by their competitors as the ones to follow. How much you're looking to get? And six thousand four and two thousand four. They're all original. You mind if I have a buddy check them out? Oh no, go ahead. The expert shares his opinion, and things might not go as expected. All right. So what are your concerns, Corey? They're all original. There's a few things we look for. You know, we got a few nicks, and uh, all looks original. All the chrome, everything's factory correct. Let me look over this one. Hundred percent original on both of them. What do you think they're worth? That bike there, about twelve hundred. This bike here, holy grail, three thousand. So. The duo refuses the seller's asking price. Nice. But the seller looked pretty disappointed. I'll go three for the pair. This one, I'll do 700. I can't do that. 5,500. Really far off. We're not going to make a deal. All right. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Guess I won't be riding a bike today. Chum was called out to check out this kid's ride. Really trying to prove myself around here. So I'm going to go check it out on my own. It's a 1950 horse and buggy valley kitty ride. One getting there, the owner told him how he got it. Chum asks if it still worked. And after seeing the owner test it, he got his answer. Kitty ride. I was eight years old. I walked in front of a grocery store with my mom, and this was in front of the grocery store. I know Bally was uh, popular. Still is. Still is. It's a lot of fun, even for adults. Does it still work? Oh, works perfect. Watch this. Here we go. <laughs> This thing is cool as hell. They talk about the price for the ride. How much did you want to sell it for? $5,000. Well, more than I think it's worth. It's a really cool piece, but I'm going to have to put a couple thousand into it to get it restored. I'd be looking somewhere to buy this for about maybe $700. No. I would come down to $1,500. I mean, I could go up to $1,000. You got a deal. Let's go do some paper. This woman brought in a postcard with the Rolling Stones. What do we have here? Postcard, the Rolling Stones. Okay. It is signed by all five. Really, really cool. The owner is a big fan of the Rolling Stones, and as much as she would like to sell, she also isn't sure how much it is really worth. I was a fan of the Rolling Stones. I really have no idea what it's worth. They start at 300, up to 3,000. Fingers crossed, it's the 3,000. The most important question Rick asks is where she got this from. Where in the world did you get this? It was about 30 years ago. I traded it for an antique dresser. A friend liked the dresser, and I liked the Rolling Stones. So were they still in high school? Not high school. This is uh, the early 60s. Do you have an idea what you wanted? Don't know. 3,000. I have a friend who really knows what he's doing when it comes to stuff like this. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay. Is so different in letter, shape, the sizing is different. But ultimately, that's what you have here is where someone is trying to kind of mimic. All right. Thanks, man. Sure. Good to see you. Should have kept the dresser. I wasn't sure. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Take care. It's still a cool picture. I'll keep it. It's an old mixer. Like a drink mixer. Okay. Dean wants to sell this because he doesn't have any specific use for it. Where did you get it? At a garage sale. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rick tells him this is probably from the 20s. It's probably from the 20s. Okay. Rick asks Dean if he knows how mixed drinks came into the picture. Well, we'll see a patent on it or a manufacturer. Do you know how the mixed drink came about? No, not really. Okay, it was because of prohibition, because the alcohol was so nasty and disgusting that you basically had to mix it with something to get it down. Bathtub gin doesn't taste great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no way you're gonna get 350 out of it. I mean, I might consider it if the thing looked semi-new, but it looks terrible. You know, I'll give you 100 bucks for the thing. 125? 75. He's just mean and grumpy. Yeah, I'll do 125. Okay, I'll take it. All right, thank you. All right. Chum noticed a Spacelander bike, and he was driving around the neighborhood. He then asked the owner if he could take a look at it. What are you doing? I was driving by, I seen that pretty cool bike. Is that a Spacelander? Yeah. Mind if I come over and look at it? He asked the man how he got it. I got it for Christmas in 1960. I'm the original owner. There's only a handful known to exist in private collectors, restaurants, and museums. Chum asks if the man wants to sell it, and he tells him he wants to. The talk about the price. So is this thing for sale? Oh, I got a legal issue coming up, and I need some cash. How much are you trying to sell it for? 20000 Would you be willing to take 7000 for it? You want to go up to twelve? If you can go eighty-five, it's a deal. Make it 9000 and we got a deal. Eighty-seven, and I can do it, man. All right, 8700 This woman brought in something to sell. Rick checks it, and he immediately guesses what it is. How are you? That looks heavy. Yeah, it's yeah. not too bad. Um... 
Door knocker? <laughs> it's a knocker. They're from MGM Studios. They're from my husband. He was an antique dealer in LA. Rick calls it super cool. This right here is like super cool. That was the mascot. Leo the lion. There was a plane crash hmm. in the desert, and the lion was on the plane. The lion was still alive. So after that was lucky Leo. I would offer it at 950. I'm sure I can resell it. Can I give you 800 bucks? I'm just not sure what I'm going to get for it. We meet each other. What's halfway? 860. How about 875? <laughs> <laughs> You know what, you got a deal. Well, thank you. I'm gonna put this on my office door. <laughs> that signature can be verified. I can easily sell them together for big money. Rick takes a look at the paperwork and decides to invite an expert to the shop to help him authenticate the item. This is all the paperwork you have with it? Yes. Well, let me get someone that I trust. Hey, Drew, how's it going? Good to see you. Well, you know, Hemingway had the most incredible life. He's just incredible, and his autograph is very expensive. All right, do your magic. The expert evaluates the signatures closely, and it turns out to be fake. All right, let's take a close look, see what we have. I'm studying Ernest Hemingway signature for years you know it's very detailed it's got a lot of different structures but it's highly consistent epsilon e it's a little bit different than i've seen before the t-bar tends to be a little bit lower on the stem the baseline seems to be off this is a forgery well thanks for helping All me right. out man you're thanks, the best take care what about 1500 maybe four i'll go about 750 i'll go 500 bucks i think that's a fair price Okay. This man brings a ring that once belonged to a Mafia member. Signet ring of the Mafia boss, Lucky Luciano. If anybody got possession of this piece until now... The man told them that he got it from his mother. Antique heirloom jewelry that my mother passed along to me. He told Rick that the owner of the ring gave him his mother. He also explained who his mother was to the man who gave her the ring. There's an individual whose name I cannot use that gave this to my mother. My mother was a woman who did special services for these people because she had their personal uh, confidence and she was given it to protect it. He explained this ring in detail which shows how much he actually knows about it. The rubies are set as the eyes, but there's even the tear. I mean, Luciano was a mobster. He killed people. Do you got any paperwork on this? You won't find any paperwork on it. I've gone to as many archives as I can come up with. If it really did belong to Lucky Luciano, it could be worth some huge money to the right collector. <laughs> For this one, Rick is in London to look at some crazy expensive Banksy art. Mikael shows Rick the monkey detonator, and welcome to the hell. So I'm here in London to buy some Banksy art. So here's a piece. That's an original Banksy. Whoa. So it's Monkey Detonator, right? Yes, made in 2002. It's an original piece made out of a stencil and spray on board. This one is an original screen print. Welcome to hell. I love Banksy. I mean, he came up with his own particular style. So when you see a Banksy, you say that's Banksy. He has got that crazy mystique about him because no one knows who he or she is. The most popular art in the world now. It's simple, but it's just quintessential Banksy. The seller demands 750,000 pounds for the monarchy and 15,000 pounds for the other. But first, Rick needs someone to authenticate the art. This one, edition of 175, certificate of authenticity. The pest control, that's like his authentication company or something like that? Yes. So we have this here for this, and do you have this cert for this one? The owner conserved the original. How much? 750,000 pounds. The rat? For 15,000 pounds. Local expert that was recommended to me. I want him to come down. I want to take a look at him. Sure. The expert examines the art pieces and values them at a fair price. Let me take a closer look. So this is the monkey detonator. It's an important work by him, and it's obviously an early work by him, way back in the late 90s. on the street quite early in Bristol and organizing events, and then he came up to London, and that's really when 2000, 2001, when his notoriety started to rise. What do you think of this one? I, I mean, Banksy's rats are his signature. But I think this is one of the special ones. Are they legit? The one thing is that we're very lucky that Banksy invented this system, so we can check that with pest control. So knowing it's a real McCoy, a legitimate Banksy. Cool. What are they worth? The monkey detonator on a good day in auction, 900,000, maybe more. Recent auction results, we've seen this print achieve 16,000 pounds. Nice to meet you. All right. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. The heated negotiations begin, but eventually, Rick can get the art for himself. 500,000 pounds. We are a bit far. Tell you what, I'll give you 600,000 pounds. That's 720,000 American. Too far, still. Do you think he'll take 650? 780,000 American. Just please give me a second. I was able to reach the owner. We have a deal at 700,000 pounds. Okay, we got a deal. 
Rick and Chum go to a magic show to check out an item. Chum wants to learn magic. Make you feel like a star? We're going backstage. Hey, there you are. See you. Welcome backstage. Hey, Chum. They meet up with the owner and they show Rick the item, a magic robot. Magician automaton. So what was the point of this thing? First robot. A robot could never do my job, Rick. Robots are efficient. Chum asks where he got it from. Turned out he got it from his father, who brought it back from the Second World War. Where'd you get this thing? My grandfather brought it back from Europe after World War II. So what do you want for it? Two grand. Let's get Murray back in here. What do you think this is worth? A really great shape, $5,500. Would you take three grand for it? 48. No. I'll give you 3,300 bucks. Would you go up to four? 3,500 bucks. I'll do 35. Now I'm gonna go find Chum. Hopefully Murray made him disappear. Thanks. Oh, that's a pretty cool year, man. Finally won World Series in 95. Buffalo Bills of the 90s. So where'd you get it? A buddy of mine, they needed the money and was Turner the staff member? He was the owner. Yeah, Ted Turner. No one really liked him. <laughs> the design was pretty basic, but by the 1970s, got flashier with lots and lots of diamonds. These things can go for a lot of money. But it's crucial to get a professional appraisal. You mind if I have a buddy come down and take a look at it? How come? What, what, I'd like to get the money and get out of here. Might come in and tell you it's worth a little bit more. Let me give him a call. What concerns did you have with the ring? It's a staff ring. What do you think it might be worth? We have a large diamond, 18 smaller diamonds surrounding it. On the inside, we should see the Jossens logo. This isn't even a staff ring. This is what they call a salesman sample. See if they like it, approve it. Ted Turner's not a guy to hock his ring or sell it to come up with a few quick bucks. You're looking at around two grand. The customer is disappointed with the offer, hoping for $10,000, but getting much less. I would offer you around $800 for it. No, I'll, I'll just take it home. Thank you. All right. Then I'm not bringing any more rings into this shop. This customer brought in John Wayne's hat. Me again. What's up, man? John Wayne's hat from the man who shot Liberty Valance. From Liberty Valance. They have a short chat about the movie. I mean, it had some stars, big time stars. James Stewart, John Wayne, Lee Van Cleef, yep. Lee Marvin. Those four together kicked the ass anybody in Hollywood right now. <laughs> <laughs> this customer bought it from a collector, and now he wants to resell it. I bought it from a big collector. He didn't want to sell. I brought out a briefcase full of money. Hollywood just does not make movies like that anymore. Maybe Quentin Tarantino. Am I allowed to say that? Rick talks more about how awesome the John Wayne movie was and still is. John Wayne has so much tough guy swagger. And think about it. It's been up to 70 years. People still love him. So how much do you want for it? 95000 The movie was in black and white. It's hard to tell the colors match. Do you mind if I have someone look at this? Sure. <laughs> looks really good and the shape is good it doesn't look the right size to me he would have had to really mind if i put it on it should ears a problem it's a maybe I i'm skeptical and 95 grand we just can't pay it figure out a way to prove oh and you know i will <laughs> all right man appreciate it buddy all right what do we got here 18th century flintlock pistol used around the revolutionary war period got a lot of history to it i think it's a really good gun so why are you trying to get rid of it my wife is uh is kind of pushing me for it i love this gun like been the cream of my uh collection and where'd you get it i got it at a gun shop there was a seller there corey asks the price of the item and doubts the legitimacy of the pistol how much are you looking to get for it yeah, i'd like to get a grand a grand um, not that it wouldn't be worth a grand i just don't know if it's real i'd like to call in an expert well this form of flintlock pistol made by the british it's a smooth bore barrel a range of about 20 to 30 feet. You know, it wasn't rifled. Your accuracy was not so good. What do you think it's worth? After evaluating the authenticity of the pistol, the expert suggests a price for the item. The deal takes a turn as it is revealed that the item is artificial. Anywhere between 15 and 2,500. Unfortunately, I know a reproduction. Um, it's a bit different in style. You're sure? 100%. The owner has a hard time facing the reality and gets infuriated. I paid 800 bucks for this. You, you got burned. I feel bad for the guy. I should have got the paperwork. My wife was pissed, and now she's really going to kill me. First edition for whom the bell tolls by Ernest Hemingway and a framed autograph of Ernest Hemingway. That signature can be verified. I can easily sell them together for big money. I got a beautiful piece of Renaissance art. Who is it done by? Raphael. Sort of like walking in here, I have the Holy Grail. This man brought in a jacket previously worn by Elvis when he was alive. This is Elvis's super fly coat. The man explains that this is an iconic piece. One of the most iconic pieces of Elvis wardrobe. Rick is still in disbelief of the fact that it actually belongs to Elvis. You're saying this was, this belonged to Elvis? It did. Rick asks him where he got this coat from, and he explained, How in the hell did you get this? I bought this from Mike Moon, who owns the Elvis Presley Museum in Tennessee. He had it on display in that museum for about 30 years, and I have a bill of sale listing several items, including this coat described here. How much were you looking to get out of it, too? 75,000. Thick amber with a tarantula in it. It's between 40 and 50 million years old. I actually have a gemstone expert here. All right. Jeff! Tell me about this paperwork. Where did you get this from? Berkeley to the entomology department. The expert is already at the shop, and the item is sent to GIA for authentication. 
GIA, gem identification, and this is where I would send it. You can pay for us to send it. It costs about $200 to send it away. Yeah. I'll do that. The results come out, and the gem turns out to be fake. You help this gentleman? Yeah. Jeff probably got the results back. You like to do the honors? Say it is plastic. Plastic. This sucks. I definitely respect Jim Daly as an artist. I started my own business. The economy being the way it is, kind of got to do what you got to do. The least I'm willing to take, 7500 Where did you get it? Rick asked where he got it from, and he told him his dad got it as a tip. My dad was a mover. Guy decides to tip him out with this painting. This was a tip? Rick says that Jim's work is remarkable and valuable. Jim Daly is a contemporary artist, paints Western-themed things. It's well-painted. He's not a pop artist. Things like this hold their value a lot better. You got a dollar figure? 13000 how much you realistically want for it? Start at 10. No, I, I can't. I will give you 6,000. Can you do 8,5? No, I can do 6. Could you do 7,5? I'll go 6,500. 6,500. Deal, man. Cool. This will definitely help me out in my new business. A rare Civil War era photograph. Rick discusses the item with the owner for a while. Anything to do with Gettysburg is interesting. It's literally the battle that completely changed the course of American history. Have you ever seen any other pictures of this? Library of Congress does have one. Okay. Photographs this at this time period. The paper wasn't the top quality meant to last. How much you want for it? 15000 Okay. Um, let me call someone up. This is a house that was there during the Civil War, but it's rare and everything like that. I'll be right back. Okay, thanks. So this is the photograph is of the Wentz House. I know next to nothing about it, so. The Wentz House is, is an interesting one. There's no known photograph of the Wentz House that existed during the battle. There is a drawing. This is not the Wentz House. The Wentz House was half tall log structure. It doesn't quite fit. This is not, you no. can't confirm. It's not the Wentz House. At this point, I don't know what it is. It'd be really hard for me to, it's mm -hmm. just not for me. Have a good one, man. Well, thanks for looking at it. No problem. So, so Mark might be a little bit smarter than me. A little. This seller bought a cool pistol for Rick to check out. Rick calls it one of the finest things. Hey, I got something to show you. My volcanic pistol. Really, really cool. It's amazing this came in the shop here. The owner is a collector of firearms and would like to sell them because he needs the money for his children. I'm a big collector of firearms. I'd like to sell it. I have two boys in college. Could use the money. Rick explained how it was made and how it worked. The first lever action gun. It was built by Horace Smith and Daniel Wesson. You like a lever action rifle? Throw out the old shell, load the new shell. I'd like to get maybe 10. How about five grand? It's not a quick seller. How about eight grand? I'm gonna bring people in. I'll give you 6,500 bucks for it. How about 75? 6,500 bucks, more than fair. Thanks. What do we have here? First edition, For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway, and a framed autograph of Ernest Hemingway. Where did you get this? I got it in an online auction. Ernest Hemingway had just an incredible life. He was a war correspondent. He was a boxer. He lived a really interesting life. The owner discloses the content of the book, and Rick seems to be a fan. The plot revolves around the character Robert Jordan, who sent over there to help the uh, rebels. Their goal is to blow up a bridge. There was a good guy trying to do the right thing, but the hero always died. I guess that's kind of the way Hemingway saw himself. Right here at the bottom of the page, you see the A. That makes it a first edition. And there's just not that many copies out there. The man fascinates Rick and Mr. Harry Austin with his rare Colt revolvers. Rick discovers these guns were not factory engraved, making them worth less. A pair of 1860 Colt Army revolvers. Where in the world did you get these? Found them in my garage. It's a hell of a find. <laughs> we were cleaning out the garage. I'm hoping to get 20,000. They're beautiful guns. Basically what they are, Civil War Army issue Colts. The best pistol out there during the Civil War. I mean, you can actually shoot six shots within a few seconds. How much do you want for them? 20,000. Do you know how much a pair of 1860 Colt factory engraved pistols are worth? No, I didn't. Over $100,000. These are real deal Colts. So you have this serial number was a 50,000 gun difference here. The serial number wouldn't be off by like more than 20 or 30 numbers, but they're not factory engraved. The guy demanded 20 grand for it, but sold it to Rick, got it for much less. All said and done, son, what are we gonna pay for them? 3,500? They just seem like they're in great condition. I've never seen anything like them. 6,000. Can you take four grand? How about 5,500? I'll tell you what, I'll give you five grand. Fair, fair price. Can you get them to offer more? I was thinking 45, son. Yeah, I can't go up to five. Well, I've already offered them that. Day. That's you, not me. Yeah, I mean, five grand's it. Five grand is it. I'll do the five. Thank you. I'm not really into guns, man. I'm gonna go buy me a new motorcycle. Hey, Rick. What's up? What the hell's a 4J? <laughs> What do you know about this thing? Made by Hudson Bay, around 1700s. My dad actually got it. He, do you know what he paid for it? A second mortgage on his house. Okay. I know the Hudson Bay Company. They were a trade company, traded with Indians. That's Venetian glass. Yeah. The deal unfolds quickly, and it's quite the escalation. And how much you want for it? For about 100000 You know, I don't see that happening. Why not? I think it's worth a lot less. 
How much less? 99,000 less. It's not 1,700. So you see this weird, this yellow gray patina that's on it? Uh, that tells me right away it's nickel silver. They're right around 20% zinc. The zinc wasn't isolated really until the 1800s. What the f are you talking about? You're way out of line. I'd offer you a thousand bucks. I don't know what you're smoking, man, but take my stuff and leave. All right, have a nice day.